Welcome back, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. This is the Smorgasbord Radio Show. And I'm Chris, your host. And I'm Allie. Welcome back to the Smork Show Lounge, Allie. This is my daughter, the original co-host of the Smork Show podcast, going back almost 13 years. Merry Christmas, everybody. Well. Well, it was nice to arrive by by a one-horse open sleigh today instead of the usual... Motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, we came in together this time. Yes. Well, it's been a while since you were here doing a show with me and missed you. I think it was around Halloween that I was here last. Halloween, you're right. You did the um, the witch talk. Y- yeah, episode. and let me say, I'm a. I mean, I liked Halloween as a kid with dressing up in costume and everything, but I don't know. As I've gotten older, I've just kind of gotten tired of Halloween and when it comes around it's like oh I can't wait for it to be over yeah because for me it's like when Halloween is over it's well first of all I find it weird that our culture glorifies and glamorizes gore and and really dark witchy stuff and maybe yeah. I sound lame for saying that but um but I just like that once Halloween is over I don't know there's just a, a change in in pace and you know you got Thanksgiving to look forward to but then Christmas I like to view as a season that you can enjoy for just in the couple months leading up to it, and I just yeah. love this time of year. Me too, and obviously Halloween. You know, growing up it was fun, and then going away to college, it becomes a different kind of thing, a different scene. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I became, you know, a bachelor and I was living in the city, then it was a different thing. And then, of course, having you know a, a, a child, you go through it all over again. You live through their eyes, and Halloween's kind of fun again. But then after you grew up and moved out, we couldn't wait to get out of here on Halloween. We would go to the movies. We, <laughs> so that you don't hear the doorbell ringing all night. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. And this past Halloween, we were, we even took it one step further. We went to South Dakota. So we were totally out of out of pocket. But anyway, I, I know what you mean. It's not really the same anymore. And I'm not into that scene. Yeah. Speaking of culture and scene, before we get into the Christmas theme of this show. Yes, what are you going to lay on me now? <laughs> I just want to ask if you've seen this latest trend this past week. I, it seems like it's been a week. You might have seen it longer. Mm-hmm. But it seems like everybody is doing that artificial intelligence photos of themselves. Yeah, and I wonder what that's about because I'm like, like you have to... I don't know, upload, you know, a certain amount of photos of yourself for it to create an avatar or to create an idea of what you look like. Yeah. A three, almost a 3D image of you so that it can generate all these photos from different angles and like potential outfits or hairstyles you would have. And I'm like, how are we just all doing? Why are people just jumping on the bandwagon? Like, oh, that sounds fun. I'm like, what are they doing with the photos of us? I don't know. I know because um, this reminds me of, you know, a couple of years ago, people were um, using that app to make yourself really old. It was like Facetune or something. No, that's not what it was called. I know what you're talking about. Face something, yeah. Um, and then it was later discovered that it was a, a Russian app. Yeah. And then there was another one that came out. I think it's called something like Pixel Up, and it's supposed to take old digitized, like old worn out photos, mm-hmm. and fill in kind of the the cracks and the wrinkles, and you know, brighten it up a little bit. So I tried it out and I tested it out. And first of all, it doesn't work unless you're connected to, you know, internet. Why? Mm-hmm. So if you turn off your Wi Fi and you turn off your cell phone signal, it won't work. It, won't. it, it doesn't, it's not a resident local. Interesting. App. So that means your photos have to go somewhere and back. Right, because it, it, why it, other photo editing apps or if you put a filter on something, you don't need internet for that. Yeah. Hmm. Now, The other weird thing about it was that I noticed that some of my pictures that came back to me, oh, yeah. my eyes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looked at a little Asian flair to them. <laughs> that kind of the almond shape going? <laughs> almond shape. Yeah. Um, so it tells me that it was developed 
probably in China. <laughs> and they they thought they built this algorithm to say, okay, we're this is how a person should look. And it's like, well, I got it back. It's like, those aren't my eyes. <laughs> so just a it's like note. it's like seeing artwork of like it's like seeing pictures of Jesus or Santa Claus depicted in other countries, and you're like. Hmm. I don't think Jesus was Korean, you know, <laughs> but also, you know, the, the, the argument is like, okay, well, in Western art, Jesus isn't as pasty white as we make him out to be right. either. It's kind of just whatever country tries to interpret the photo. It's like they put their own spin on it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So. so anyway, back to this AI, you know, thing. It's like, it's another thing where everybody's jumping on the bandwagon and doing it. It's like, what's the point? I mean, I guess... You're creating this digital version of yourself that doesn't exist, and I mean, yeah, I well, don't know. One, it, it's it's another uh, outlet or a uh, what's the word? Um, I guess a, a plug for you know everyone drawing attention to themselves. It's another like <laughs> yeah. self uh, you know focused thing, but um, but it does seem a little creepy. Yeah, and but then you know I'm 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 on the fence about it because okay. Like, I know my photo is out there because I'm on social media, you yeah. know, like, you know, the our, the website or like my website for business. Like, my photo is out there. My information's out there. Yeah. Like, I know that, you know, companies have my, my data, my information and probably more things that I would like them to know. So, yeah. on one hand, I'm like, okay, something like this app, if I were to up- upload photos of myself, is it really a, a big deal if they're just selfies? Because yeah. those are things that, you know, I don't care if they go out there, but, but it is a little bit of a... You wonder. You wonder what they're doing with. Why it. are they storing those photos? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little. I get a little more skeptical of things now in older age. Especially I guess. when everybody jumps on the bandwagon so quick. I've yeah. always been late to the party with stuff. You know? Usually, when everybody's doing something, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I, I don't want to do this. Right. Yeah, I've always been like that too. But you're right. I I guess at this point, if you go to our website, my whole story is there. I yeah, mean, right. So I've mean, I, I got nothing to hide You've gotten there. pretty vulnerable on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some pretty uh, funny videos from, you know, early days that I probably, if I were looking for a job now, I probably wouldn't want out there. Yeah, but you're still employed, so. <laughs> yeah, they haven't found me yet. <laughs> right. So. Um, I think people have put worse things out there than what you have out there. That is true. That is very true. So we have a hot beverage in the studio here. Normally, Jerry's here. We're pouring whiskey. But um, I've got um, mm. salted caramel, hot chocolate. Very good. Swiss Miss. Very nice. I have a red velvet latte. And it actually looks like it's got kind of a red color to it. Yeah, I know. Kind That's, of rosy. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I could actually put some Baileys in here, but it is a work night. Yeah, yeah, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Yeah, we're recording down. this on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> By the way, this is episode one fifty seven, and this is the Christmas episode. This is our last episode for the year because we're going to take the next few weeks off and just uh, kind of kick back. And uh, probably we'll have Dave and Jerry out to the studio sometime, you know, Christmas to New Year's, you know, week, and we'll crank out some uh, episodes and we'll you know put them out <clears throat> in the new year, twenty twenty three. Yeah. I feel like I kind of uh, phoned it in a lot of this year. We did a lot of reruns. We did a lot of retrospective repackaging. I like to call them encore presentations, not reruns. <laughs> but this is, you said yourself that this has been the most consistent year since basically the beginning when we used to do weekly and then biweekly and we were pretty consistent with that. Yeah. You know, but so I would say since that era, this year has been the most consistent with constantly putting things out there even if it's repackaged but you put you you um it's not just playing old episodes i mean it's it's categorized and and organized very nicely and yeah and then it's just been about figuring out the the new format and structure of the show and finding kind of that new season that new rhythm of it yeah and it was a big year too it was our 40th anniversary of um, the smorgasbord brand so we had a lot of retrospective but we want to get, we want to look forward now and do something new and we'll that's, see how that goes. I was going to say though, yeah. that's still a lot of work to do all of that. The, you know, even though you're saying that, oh, I like for the, like the, for the 40th anniversary special, even though you're saying that a lot of it was just going back and re-listening to stuff. I mean, you had to find all of those and then like, or, I mean, have an outline for it. That's still the equi- the same amount of work as writing a show, if not more, because you have to go back and find everything. So yeah, you didn't right. just... 
you didn't phone in, meaning like uh, you took right. the lazy approach. It just yeah, was, like I just you took the old nostalgic episode. approach. I did, <laughs> which did is your style. Of, That's your thing. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Allie. No, you're right. It, it, it took as much a, a effort to put those episodes together for the 40th as it did any of the radio plays or um, the Carlisle show preparation and all that stuff. Just like you said, categorizing it, putting a theme, a story around it. It wasn't just. It, there was a purpose and there was a mm-hmm. sequence and there were segments was, of, yeah, like bits together. Yeah, you had to edit it all together. Yeah. And then it, it, it's always interesting to see how it's going to come out when you've got the dynamic of having Dave and or Jerry here mm-hmm. because you never know what they're what spin they're going to put on something. So it's unexpected. So after putting all that's something I've got to get better at is that I have an outline for myself mm-hmm. and I have to be a little more flexible with not letting it drive the show because there's a lot of spontaneity that makes the show even better. Well, especially you never know what kind of rabbit trail that Jerry's going to take you on too, you know, <laughs> or wormhole, whatever <laughs> the that word. <laughs> wormhole. But yeah, so maybe bullet points is the secret where you, you have yeah. certain topics that you know you want to touch on. You're not quite sure what order, but you find a organic way of bringing them up. Yeah. You know? And that's true. I mean, I guess I did some of those with Jerry with, um, you know, the James Bond episode. And I just kind of bullet points and I just let him react. I would get the sensationalism out of just playing it for him and he'd have to react to the insanity of some of the Mm -hmm. cultural things. Well, so, well, side note, it's kind of related to that. So I think the audience knows I teach music classes and I teach piano and what I like to do is I have a lesson plan for each of my students. Each For each private lesson, I have a lesson plan. And it'll be like, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's what we're going to talk about today. And a lot of times I show up to a lesson and they, you know, they've either practiced less or more than I've expected. And so then you kind of have to like take a different avenue. Okay, well then we're going to do this today. We're going to, you know, yeah. so, so it's, I'm the same way where I like having an outline, but then you need to know how to adapt if plans change. You right. Know? No, that's very good. So as we close out the year, any big standout moments for you this year? What were some of your highlights? Uh, moving into a bigger place in a townhouse. Yeah, you got a really nice home. And Allie hosted, Allie and my son-in-law Thomas hosted Thanksgiving, which was fantastic. You guys did such a great job. I'm glad it all went smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> was it 14 people in the 14 end? 14 people at one point all in in one space. You made it work. You made it work. But yeah, first time hosting a holiday like that. Um so that was probably the biggest thing this year was just, you know, our new place. Um I guess the expansion of my own business and um you know, I've been teaching private lessons full time for over a year now but um, in the fall was when I moved to like it expanded to um, I'm teaching at a Montessori school a couple mornings a week so just new like you know new job in a way Um, so yeah yeah it feels like a lot of stuff like a lot of new beginnings this year yeah you guys got married a year ago and Mm -hmm. it's just been a year of just um, getting settled into that new life Mm -hmm. and yeah, becoming your own unit. <laughs> right, yeah. And figuring things out as a team. We got in our car accident this past year. That's Oh, yeah, <laughs> that we always, talked that, about that. That will stick out of my head, but just all the takeaways from that. And um, we um, did some traveling this year. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good year. Like, looking back on it, it there's a lot of exciting things that, that happened, especially when I think about where we were at the start of the year in our little apartment compared to now it's yeah it's uh it was a good one i can't wait for 2023 i am trying to turn off the heat let me see if i can do this alexa turn up the temperature five degrees turn up turn off the heat you just turned up the temperature I think you just activated everyone's... Wait a minute. Up the... No, yeah. you're right. It's you going to be down. Now it's going to be... Okay. Alexa. Be boiling. Alexa, turn down the heat 10 degrees. The heat's set to 61. Oh, now oh. it's 61. Okay. I don't think it went up. Okay, 61. All right. That means it will turn off now. Okay. Or soon. Yes. See, the heat, 
even though we're in a studio in the basement and it's generally pretty padded here, it's not soundproof, it's sound treated, I guess. It's, um, we still hear the furnace and it interferes with our microphones. So just a little shop talk. So, my, and, my mom's out right now, but she'll, she'll be home in, you know, a half hour. She's going to come home and be like, why is it 61 <laughs> degrees in the can, house? Can I put the heat back on? Right, yeah. This won't be long. So Christmas. Um, we're going to be going into um, talking about an encore episode. I'd like to, we have a lot of new listeners. And uh, for you stumbling on a show for the first time, you may not be familiar that we did some radio plays over the uh, course of the 13 years. I think we had, what, 11? Something like that, 11 Mm -hmm. productions. One of them. collection. Yeah. And one of my favorite ones uh, is A Christmas Carol. It's probably the warmest and most joyous for me to listen to Mm -hmm. uh, the different characters and the people that were involved in just the production. And we'll talk maybe a little bit about it as in the closing comments. But before we go into that, I would like to just maybe reflect. Well, we've been talking to our parents lately about their favorite Christmas memories because, you know, we don't know how much longer they're going to be around. And we don't really know too much about their childhood in some respects. And I thought, can you share with us some Christmas stories or something that stands out? How did you celebrate? Do you have any special memories, Do you have special toys that you received? And so I thought maybe that might be something we can talk about here for a few minutes yourself, yeah. mine included. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I know what Christmas was like for you because I lived it, there, I planned right? it, I was there, but I never knew what stuck what stuck with you. And Yeah. Well, I mean, I have so... Like, Christmas for me is so nostalgic because I have so many fond memories. Um, and it, I just remember Christmas feeling so magical as a kid, you know? And now there's different things that I appreciate about about Christmas now that I'm older. But as a kid, it's just like this, you know, magical, very like warm time and family time. And so, um, yeah, I mean, we had a lot of traditions that we did each year. Um, I loved uh, driving around and looking at the Christmas lights, you know, like uh, maybe bringing hot chocolate in the car or something, listening to Christmas music um, on the radio or we'd put a CD in the car or whatever and drive around the, our neighborhood and look at, at the lights and I just um, always enjoyed that because that was very much like a just a simple like we're in the moment and driving around and talking as a family um, I, uh, I I mean I I can't talk about Christmas as, as a kid and, and fail to mention my elf that would visit each year you know you're I guess I didn't call it elf on the shelf back no, then no it was but... not elf on the shelf it was um yeah, different different elf. Um, By the way, uh, if you're parents and you have kids in the room, because you know this is a Christmas episode, you may want to remove the kids. We're, we're going to talk about the secrets the of secrets Santa. The secrets of Santa <laughs> and the, uh, you know, the secrets of Christmas. You know what I mean? So, we'll give you 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, I think that's good enough. I think they've been ripped out of the room. and Yeah, so, yes. <laughs> so I loved every year getting a, um, a letter in the mail with um from santa and it had and then or i guess it was a little like a little box a little package that i would get and inside was a letter from santa and then a little like uh tube or a vial of magic snow (laughs) (laughs) and it was um what i was supposed to well i actually i should back up to the first christmas where this happened because i remember being really little i think we were in the townhouse so i was like what four yeah something like that yeah um, I was four when the first time that this happened. It was a, it was, I we got a package and inside it was an elf named Lottie and a letter from Santa with the tube of magic snow. And it was, um, this is Lottie from the North Pole. She's going to visit you around Christmas time. And what I'm supposed to do is sprinkle the magic snow um, at night before bed. And then when I'm sleeping, she comes to life. And then when I wake up, I see all the shenanigans that she was up to. Um, and so that was always so exciting. And the funny thing was that first Christmas, the original plan was Lottie was supposed to go back to the North Pole, I guess Christmas Eve night, right? Right. But I was in hysterics and crying because I didn't <laughs> want her to go back. And it's like, well, okay. <laughs> I, I know. We didn't think this through. And we're thinking, okay, this is Christmas Eve. We're supposed to be excited about tomorrow. And, and I'm 
crying because I don't want to say goodbye to my friend. <laughs> yeah, and I don't remember if we took care of it. We took care of it Christmas Eve for you, or did we figure this out somehow I, Christmas morning? I left a letter next to the plate of cookies for Santa that okay. night saying, can Lottie stay with me throughout? Like, can she stay here? That's right. But, um... And then what ended up happening was, you know... Somehow you are able to go to sleep not knowing to, the answer. Right. But then the next morning I come downstairs and Lottie is still there, but the magic snow has been removed. So the deal was that, you know, the my elf could stay with me all year round, but she would only come to life around Christmas time because that's what made it special and magical. If she did that the whole year, then it wouldn't yeah. be special anymore. That's your mother's idea. She was brilliant with that. Yes, right. So the snow would go back with Santa. but but then So then every Christmas after that, it was like... It was always like, you know, a week or maybe two weeks out from Christmas where it was like, all right, I'm checking the mail because the snow should be arriving soon. Yeah. And then when I got that letter <laughs> with the snow, it was like, yes, like the week leading up to Christmas was when, you know, she would come to life. And and uh, there was a lot of oh, creative, yeah. like, I can't even imagine the time and hours that went into some of the things yeah, that I she did how, for me. I know. I don't know how many years we ended up doing that, but it seemed like... It wasn't an every night thing, was it? Or was it? It was every night, and but that's why, I I think it was usually around like December fifteenth. Okay, that so the we snow had to, would yeah. arrive. So it was maybe like a good otherwise she'd week be, and a half. And she'd have to come up with these new stunts every night up until Christmas Eve, and they would be things like you know simple things where they might be watch she might be watching a movie. Yeah. So we'd come down, we would see all the VHS test tapes on the floor, and she'd be sitting there, and there'd be a bowl of snacks, right. or crumbs, and. But then closer to Christmas that it would get maybe more elaborate where I remember one morning I woke up and my bed posts were all decked out with like cut out snowflakes. That and one was tough so, because you, we had to do that while you were yeah, sleeping. Yeah, right. So <laughs> good thing I was a heavy sleeper. sleeper. <laughs> um, another favorite was waking up and turning on my digital camera and seeing all the photos that my elf took in the middle of the night and all, oh, the, yeah. all the selfies. But, you know. <laughs> You managed to not get your hand in the picture. <laughs> right. The, um, the sled down the stairs. Oh, that's right. The sled down the stairs. The, um, the snow packing angel. My, packing my lunch. Oh, my yeah. My lunch was packed and it was like like the Christmas tree cakes, you know, like the little Debbie cakes, um, candy. And it was it was so cool going to school that day and, saying, and telling my friends that my elf packed my lunch because Elf on the Shelf wasn't. Like, like this wasn't Elf on the Shelf. I think Elf Magic was the company yeah, or something. Yeah, right. But um, but it was I didn't know that many kids that had elves. Like I, it was like it wasn't a thing. It yet. wasn't a thing. But now yeah. a lot of like every single one of my piano students are like, oh, our elf is here, and it just is like it's yeah. it's a more popular commercialized thing now. Um, so it was really cool to be the only kid at school with an elf. It's like, oh, I'm I must be special. <laughs> so you got that fancy lunch packed for you one day mm -hmm. where you got to school and you opened it and it was like what like candy that's cane? what i was saying was oh. it was yeah the little debbie like christmas cakes candies like candy oh. canes and then you're and then you knew it was real because your mother would never have packed right this i lunch said to you. her i know <laughs> that yeah you you would never let me have a lunch like this yeah and she's like snickering like yeah, you know it was perfect yeah so all so that was always so fun because it was like just the build up to christmas um yeah, and then, and then, uh, oh my gosh, my, my mom was, it, she she's in all the details with, with everything, because, like, even the letters from Santa, she had, like, special stationery for that, and she, like, perfected, like, the handwriting, like, to make it I look know. like a jolly, magical man <laughs> would yeah. have written it. Um, so it just, it, and then, yeah, even, Santa even had his own, his own wrapping paper, you know, like, separate from you from you guys it just was like it was such a production <laughs> yeah it was very magical yeah it started off with lottie and then you got lindy the little yeah she a had sister? a sister little sister that yeah. came a few years later yeah. yeah and you still have them right did you have them at your place or are they, they're here they're, they're here. here somewhere oh uh, yeah they're tucked away in, in a, a call space somewhere no i think they're oh, I, right. I think she they're up in an upstairs closet yeah. i don't think they're left in the you're in right the basement. they got a special home in the house because um yeah yeah they'll always be special but. yeah well so that was so that's a huge that's a staple of my of Christmas as a kid for me, um, and then on top of that, all of the movies and always saving the Muppets Christmas Carol for Christmas Eve. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the music we always had certain music that would play. Yeah. Um, I used to always do a gingerbread house with my grandma with your mom 
each year. We always, and each year I think the gingerbread house got more and more elaborate, it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, we'd leave the house for the day and come back and even though she did a good job, a general cl- job cleaning up, she was she didn't meet the standard of your mother, and oh, right. she'd find glitter and stuff all over. Yeah, the house right. For days icing like on yeah. the on the cabinets and the drawer handles <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, but um, yeah, I think those are the biggest ones that stick out to me. Um, uh, also, Christmas Eve night um, always as a kid being able to open up like one gift and a lot of times it was Christmas pajamas that I could wear that night, you know, um, shaking presents when you would go to bed. <laughs> Cause, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cause you, uh, you didn't like any surprises being spoiled, but yeah, I don't so. know where that came from, but, <laughs> um, yeah. So those are the ones that stick out in my head. And then, and then I, I always love Christmas Eve, like candlelight service at church. Like I, that just, yeah, feels so warm and. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things too. And the stillness and uh, stillness of Christmas, you know. Yeah, so I think I, I think I. I think you covered the highlights. Covered the a ones lot that of... stood out for me for from your growing up. For my growing up, I I don't think we did consistently anything that really stands out that I look forward to every year. The only thing that. I remember happening every year and it was more of my own doing was there was the phone phone Santa. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so Illinois bell at the time it was, you know, before AT&T and all of that sort of thing. It was Illinois bell. They had um, a phone number that was for the weather and the time, believe it or not, there was actually a phone number. <laughs> if you needed to know what the time was, I know from sorry, wrong number. Oh, really? Well, so oh. I remember it, one of the scenes is she says, she calls the operator and says, what is the time? But I, I know that was before your time. So that, that was that, actually calling an operator. This was yeah, an automated yeah. one. You would call. There was only one area code back then for all of Illinois. It was no, it was 312, so you didn't have to dial the area code. So the phone number was, I think, 936-2525. Wow. And then I think it was 936-1212 for the weather. But... You'd call it. It would say, at the tone, the time will be 9.03 and 10 seconds. Boop. And then, at the tone, the time will be 9.03 and 20 seconds. Boop. And it, that's all it was, all the time. So, during the month of December, they would replace that phone number with Santa. Mm. And so, you would call on every day. And you'd get a one or two minute story that Santa would... And every day, he was in a different country. And it's like, tomorrow I will be in Holland. And then he'll give you the history, the the traditions of Holland. Oh, cool. I'm thinking, why would he be why would he be traveling before Christmas? Yeah. I don't think about that then. I said, oh, he's cool. He's going around the world, but it's not even Christmas yet. Some kid from Holland is like, uh, you're early. No, yeah. This is... So, I mean, I guess it's sort of like the Nordak Santa tracker now where you can go online and Christmas Eve, you can see where he is all, and he covers the entire globe. <laughs> Yeah, and you could plug it in. There's a plug-in for a, a Google Earth or something, so you could see the globe spinning. Yeah, and, I rem- yeah well, cool. I remember that as a kid, and like we'd be getting home from like the late church service, and it's like, oh my gosh, he's gonna. <gasps> he's, he's in Canada. I, yeah, right. It's like <laughs> I have to be asleep before he gets here. Like, yeah, Christmas was always so hard to sleep, and I had this like just fear that oh my gosh, if I don't get to sleep, he's gonna skip over our house. And so, <laughs> the, the harder I would try to fall asleep, then the more wired I would get and then yeah. I can't or is, is that the word wired yeah yeah that then it was like I can't sleep I know <laughs> but somehow you, somehow you do it always takes over yeah um so you, yeah so you would call and hear the history of Santa any yeah. other things that stick out for you I'm trying to think of some like toys that I got I, I still remember that um there's this robot toy I think I showed you I saw, found some YouTube videos that maybe have shown like a demonstration of this thing. It was this plastic, it was basically this big hunk of plastic and it was a robot and it was called 2XL. Mm-hmm. 2XL and 2XL. Oh. And it was a learning device and it really functioned basically on an 8-track tape and they had 8-track tapes that would be uh, topical. So you'd have a history one, you would have a science one, you'd have sports and it would ask you questions and give you quizzes 
and you have to push one of the four tracks because the A track, I don't, probably don't know the A track, but they had four tracks or four buttons basically. So why is it called eight track? Good point. I think the recording mechanism was eight track, but there were four segments. So hmm. like, I, I, I don't really know. <laughs> if you play an album, it would, it would play, I think, you know, ten minutes, and then it would click over to track two. Oh, I and see. And then ten minutes. Well, it was an annoying thing back then to go off on a tangent is you'd be listening to a song and right in the middle of the song it would fade out oh. and it would go click and then it would fade up oh great <laughs> so you get this big interruption <laughs> um so anyway this 2xl was saying okay for you know it asked you a question press you know a for this b and so you were basically going to another track and then his recording would pick up on that next track and it would have a different answer than what if you would have chosen C. It oh, like said, a choose your own adventure. I guess so because it was like if you pick C and it was the answer was B, it would say, no, you're wrong. And obviously B was right. So it was a oh, different. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, I, I thought that toy was cool. Yeah. Well, see, you were into all the gadgets even then. Even then. It, that's how it started. And now you're like, <laughs> everything's voice activated now, and you don't have to press any buttons. I know. <laughs> Gosh, if you, if, you, if you have a device where you have to press a button, it is so outdated. Oh, I can't be doing that. <laughs> right. I mean, think even, even the stuff that you do touch, it's touch screen now. So the actual amount of things that have buttons, other than maybe remotes, but other than that. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow. I feel a draft. I think the I think the sixty one degrees has kicked in. <laughs> I think that's a clue. That it's time for a smart show theater. So we are gonna go back to I think it's twenty eleven. We did this well, we did a production in twenty ten, and that was before we found uh, my old radio partner Dave. And there was always a segment, there was always a scene in this, in the original, that I never liked. <laughs> I know the one you're <laughs> referring to. Yeah. It was my middle school friends. <laughs> yeah, and they just didn't really... It was the scene of, like, when they find um, Scrooge's... Like, Scrooge is already... This is the future. Right. Scrooge died and... How did he die? How did he die? And then they go through... All, they have all of his things and... Well, it was a pretty lifeless delivery. It was a lifeless <laughs> delivery. Perfect. Uh, and so um, a year later, when Dave came into the show again, um, I said, Dave, let's number one, I want you to narrate. So he is the narrator of this. So he took my place because I did the original narration and I didn't like my narration either because I did something weird to my voice to make it not sound like me, but it sounded robotic. So I hated it. So Dave did it. And then he we, and, and then I Dave and I both do that scene together and I think it we nailed it I, yeah I think so too so it, uh, yeah. it's yeah definitely well because it's it, it's also it's supposed to be you know two men passing by each other on the street and it sounds a little bit weird when you have like you know a couple of 12 year olds or whatever <laughs> like, yeah. like that yeah. wouldn't really be it, it's you know kid voices doesn't quite work for the scene <laughs> right so here we go. We're going to play this, and then we'll come back and close out the show. I hope you enjoy this. This is A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens, and this is the Smorgasbord Radio Show, Smorg Show Theater. Marley was dead to begin with. There's no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. Scrooge knew he was dead? Of course he did. Scrooge and Marley were partners for I don't know how many years. Ah, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the old grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve. Old Scrooge sat busy in his counting house, a grim, cheerless place if ever there was one. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open, that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, Bob Cratchit, who in a cold and dismal little cell beyond, worked at his ledgers. 
19, 20, 21, 22. Joy to the, world. the Lord is come. Bob uh, Cratchit! Uh, yes, Mr. Scrooge? Stop that infernal catawalling! Yes, sir. Uh, singing their idiotic Christmas carols at my very door. Go on, get away from my door. Go somewhere else and bellow your blasted carols or I'll give you... Why, Governor? It's an old custom at Christmas time, you know. Yes, and I don't want any of your old customs. Take your fellow fools and go away. Christmas. Blah. Right, sir. Merry Christmas anyway, sir. Ah... Now, you get that letter from Higgins and Blackthorn, Cratchit, and then I want you to finish posting this ledger. And after that, you could pop over the Pothergills and tell him that you've come after the 17 shillings and sixpence that he's owed me since Michaelmas. And tell him I shall have a constable over there if he doesn't pay up at once. Mr. Pothergill's wife has been ill, sir. Oh, what do I care about his wife? I want my 17 and six. I, I just thought it being Christmas, sir. Christmas? Christmas! You mention that word to me once more, Bob Cratchit, and I'll... A Merry Christmas, Uncle! A Merry Christmas, Bob! Merry Christmas, Mr. Fred! God save you, Uncle! Humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle! Now, I'm sure you don't mean that. I mean just that. Exactly that. Merry Christmas! What right have you to be merry? What reason have you? You're poor enough. Well, what right do you have to be dismal about Christmas, Uncle? You're rich enough. Bah. Now, Uncle, don't be cross. Well, what else can I be when I live in such a world of fools? What's Christmas to you but a time for paying bills without money? Merry Christmas. A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Now, nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it, Uncle. Well, let me leave it alone, then. What do you want, a Christmas gift, I've no doubt? I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas. Much good may Christmas do you. Ha <laughs> ha, much good it ever has done you. There are many things from which I derive good, by which I have not profited materially. I dare say, Uncle, Christmas among the rest. But I have always thought of Christmas as a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. And therefore, Uncle... Though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. God bless Christmas. Hurrah. Let me hear another sound out of you there, Bob Cratchit, and you'll keep Christmas by losing your situation. As to you, nephew, I wonder you don't go into Parliament. You talk enough nonsense. Oh, don't be angry, Uncle. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, I tried. A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year, too. Humbug. And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob. And the missus. And to Tiny Tim. Oh, thank you, Mr. Fred. Same to you, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, Bob. Nonsense. Twaddle. Flummery. Talking of Christmas, and not two sixpences to jingle together in his trousers' pocket. Hey, hey, you there, Bob Cratchit, come here. What are you doing there? I'm only putting a bit more coal in the fire, Mr. Scrooge, seeing it's so cold in there, sir. You put that coal back into the scuttle. A fire, a fire indeed. I could tell you if you use coal at that rate, you and I will soon be parting company, Bob Cratchit. You understand that? There's many a young fellow that would like your situation, you know. I'm sorry, sir. My fingers were getting a little stiff with the cold. Well, then put on your mittens. There's someone at the door. Go on, go see who it is. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. This is the firm of Scrooge and Marley? Yes, sir. I should like to see the head of the firm, if I may. Oh, very good, sir. What is it? Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Marley's been dead these seven years tonight. I'm Scrooge. Well now, Mr. Scrooge, at this season of the year, it's only fitting that we who are more fortunate should raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. You may not believe it, sir, but many thousands are now in want of common necessities. Yeah. 
and hundreds of thousands are in one of the simplest comforts. Are there no prisons? Well, there are plenty of prisons, sir. And the workhouses? They're still in operation, I trust. I wish I could stay. They are not, but they are, sir. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigor, then? Both very busy, sir. Ah, I'm glad to hear that. (laughs) I was afraid, from what you said at first, that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. No, sir. All the institutions that you mention are flourishing. But it's nevertheless true that some additional provision for the poor and the destitute must be made. Ugh. A few of us are raising a fund, you see, and uh, what should I put you down for? Nothing. Oh, I see. You wish to remain anonymous, sir? I wish to be left alone. I don't make myself merry at Christmas time, and I can't afford to make a lot of idle people merry. I help to support the establishment that take care of the poor. They cost enough. Let those who are badly off go there. Many can't go there, sir, and many would rather die. Then my advice to them is to do so and decrease the surplus population. Besides, I've only your word for it that all this is so? It's the truth, Mr. Scrooge. Well, so be it then. It's not my business. It's enough for a man to understand his own business and not to interfere with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, sir. I quite understand, Mr. Scrooge. Good afternoon. Cratchit, show this gentleman out. Yes, sir. This way, sir, please. Sir, I couldn't help overhearing. I should like to contribute tuppence. Cratchit! Yes, sir. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. But there are others in worse situations than I. You're a generous fellow. I wish I might say so of your employer. Cratchit! Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Cratchit! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Close the door. Yes, sir. 24, 31, 1, carry 3, a new scarlet tip for Tiny Tim, comb for Martha, 33, 3, carry 3, hair ribbon for Belinda, 4, 7, 12. Cratchit! Yes, sir, yes, sir. It's too late to have you go to Pothegill's. He'll be closed up for Christmas like these other fools. We may as well close up the place now. Yes, sir. It is getting a little dark. Hard to see the figures. I suppose you'll want the entire day tomorrow? If it's quite convenient, sir. Well, it's not convenient, and it's not fair either, but I suppose I can't do anything about it. (laughs) If I was to stop half a crown of your wages, you'd think yourself very ill-used, I'll be bound. Well, sir, I... Yes, but you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. Once a year. Once a year, indeed. A fine excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose there's no good talking. You must have the whole day. Well, see that you're here all the earlier the next morning, you understand? Oh, I will, sir. I will indeed. Good night, sir. And Merry Christmas. Bah! Merry Christmas! Humbug! The office was closed in a twinkling, and Bob Cratchit, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, for he boasted no great coat, went down a slide on Cornhill, 20 times in honor of it being Christmas Eve and then ran home to Camden Town as hard as he could pelt to play with his family at Blind Man's Bluff. Scrooge, on the other hand, took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, having read all the newspapers and spent the rest of the evening with his banker's book, went to his dismal house. Darkness is cheap and Scrooge liked it. The yard was so dark that even Scrooge, who knew its every stone, had to grope with his hands through the fog and the frost to find the door. Scrooge walked through his rooms to see that all was right. Sitting room, bedroom, lumber room, all as they should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the sofa, nobody under the bed, nobody in the closet. Close the door. He locked himself in. He double-locked himself in and took off his cravat, put on his dressing gown and slippers and his nightcap and sat down before the fire to take his gruel. (sighs) Molly. Molly? Molly. I could have sworn I sold a humbug. Molly's been dead these seven years. Humbug. All humbug. 
What I need is a good night. What? what what's that? Someone's in the wine cellar. But the door's locked. And double locked. Something is coming. S something is coming closer. Outside my door. Bah! I won't believe it. It's humbug still. Ebenezer Scrooge! Ebenezer Scrooge! Oh, oh no. What do you want with me? I want much of you, Ebenezer. Who... who are you? Ask me who I was. Oh, you're very particular for a ghost. All right then, who were you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley? But you're dead. You died seven years ago. Seven years ago this very night? What's wrong, Ebenezer? Don't you believe in me? I do not. You doubt your senses, Ebenezer? Yes, yes, because a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. Y you can't be a ghost. You may be an undigested bit of beef, or a blot of mustard, or a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. <laughs> there may be more gravy than grave about you, whatever you are. Humbug, I tell you, humbug! <laughs> I do believe in you. You are a ghost, Jacob. But why? Why do you walk the earth, Jacob? Why do you come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men and travel far and wide to witness what it cannot share but might have shared on earth and turn to happiness. But tell me, Jacob, what is that chain you wear around you? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard by my own free will. Is its pattern strange to you, Ebenezer? Cash boxes, keys and padlocks, ledges and purses. Yours was as heavy and as long as this seven years ago. You have labored on it since, Ebenezer. Oh, Jacob, speak comfort to me, Jacob. Comfort? I have none to give. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger. Weary journeys lie before me. You travel fast? Yes, Ebenezer. On the wings of the wind. Ah, seven years dead and traveling all the time. Seven years, Ebenezer. Seven years of remorse. Ebenezer, do you know that no space of regret can make amends for one's life's opportunities misused? But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? Mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, benevolence, they were all my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Jacob, Jacob. Don't take on so now, Jacob. Listen to me, Ebenezer. I'll listen to you. Jacob, go on. Jacob, now speak to me, but don't be so flowery. Ebenezer, I am here to warn you that you have yet a chance of hope of escaping my fate. Do you hear that, Ebenezer? Yes, Jacob. Yes, you were always a good friend to me, Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. But, but go on, go on, go on. How shall I escape? Oh, I'm afraid, Jacob. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the only chance and hope, Jacob? It is your only chance and hope. Well, then, I think I'd rather not. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first one tomorrow, when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I take them all at once and have it over, Jacob? Ebenezer, look that for your own sake. You remember what has passed between us. Remember, when the bell tolls one, look for the first spirit. Marley, Jacob Marley, 
Scrooge awoke. He was lying in his bed, fully dressed. Suddenly, the curtains of his bed were drawn aside, and Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them, as close to it as I am now to you, and I am standing in the spirit at your elbow. It was a strange figure, like a child, and yet not so like a child as like an old woman. Its hair, which hung about its neck and down its back, was white, as if with age, and yet the face had not a wrinkle in it, and the tenderest bloom was on the skin. Ebenezer Scrooge! Who's that? Ebenezer Scrooge! I have come for you. You? Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold me? I am that spirit. Who? What are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. But what do you want of me? What brings you here to haunt me? Your welfare, Ebenezer Scrooge. Rise and walk with me. Oh, no, 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 no! Not out of the window! Why, I can't do that! I'll fall down! I'm not a spirit, I'm mortal, and I'll fall. Bear but the touch of my hand upon your heart, and you shall be upheld in more than this. Come and follow me. Where are we? What's become of the city? And there... There's snow upon the ground. Where are we? These are the shadows of the things that have been. Do you recognize this countryside? Oh, I know every inch of it. Every rock, every tree. And that bleak building over there? Ah, that building. I was a boy there. I went to school in that horrible place. Do you recollect that path? (laughs) I could walk it blindfold. Strange you should have forgotten it so many years. Come, let's go closer. Look through that window in that cold, barren room. What do you see, Ebenezer Scrooge? I see a boy. A solitary child, neglected by his family. Alone. Yes, yes, I see. I know that boy. Oh, I was so lonely. Poor boy. Your lip is trembling, Scrooge. And what is that upon your cheek? It's nothing. Nothing at all. I wish I... Uh, It's too late now. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. The waifs came to my door singing Christmas carols last night, and there was a girl like that among them. A poor, pale, thin little girl in a ragged coat. I should like to have given her something, that's all. Is that all? Come, Ebenezer Scrooge. And let us see another Christmas. Do you know this place, Ebenezer Scrooge? Know it? Know it? This is the counting house where I was apprenticed. It's my old master. Bless his heart. Old Fezziwig. My master. Alive again. And hosting one of his Christmas parties. (laughs) Pick your partners. Listen to him. Corkscrew, thread the needle and back to your places. And there's Dick Wilkins. Poor Dick. Dear, dear, dear. Yes, look. There's Mrs. Fezziwig herself, looking younger than any of them. And the tables all loaded with roasts and cider, mince pie and beer. Oh, what a jolly time we used to have. That carefree young man, the light heart and the gay smile, do you recognize him? Yes, yes, yes. Merciful heaven. How happy I was then. A small matter for old Fezziwig to make those silly folks so full of joy. Small matter. Small indeed. Isn't it? He has spent only a few pounds of your mortal money. Is that so much that he deserves praise? It's not that. It's not that, spirit. Old Fezziwig has the power to make us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or heavy. His power lies in words and looks and in things so tiny that it's impossible to count him up. The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a... uh... What is the matter? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, spirit. Something, I think. No, no. Speak. 
Well, only it's just that I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Cratchit, that's all. My time grows short, and we have yet another journey to make. Where now? Come. This is our last visit to the past, Ebenezer. Here in this little room, with a fair young girl by your side. Do you recognize yourself, Ebenezer? No, 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 no! Spare me this! You're older now, a man in the prime of life. Your face has begun to wear the signs of care and avarice. Your eyes are greedy, the eager, restless eyes of a miser. No, no, please! She knows it, too. That girl by your side. There are tears in her eyes. It matters little to you. Very little. I know that. Belle, have I changed toward you? When we were engaged, we were both poor. Was it better then? Better to be poor? Better, at least, to be happy. You're changed. You were another man then. I was a boy. You blame me because I've grown wiser? Have I ever tried to break our engagement? In words? No, never. In what, then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any value in your sight. So I release you from your promise. Belle! Oh, at first it may cause you pain to lose me, a very brief pain. But soon it will be dim, like a half-remembered dream, an unprofitable dream, and you will be glad to be awake from such a dream. May you be happy in the life you have chosen, Ebenezer, for the love of he who you once were. That's enough! Show me no more! Take me home! These were shadows of the things that have been. They are what they are. Do not blame me. No, no more! No more! One shadow more. Come. Do you see this man, Ebenezer Scrooge? This man might have been you, and the woman beside him, your wife. And that girl, that girl might have been your daughter, Ebenezer Scrooge. She might have called you father. She might have been a springtime in the haggard winter of your life. Spirit, let me go. Show me no more. Listen now while they speak, Ebenezer. Belle, I saw an old friend of yours today. Who was it? Guess. How can I? It... Oh, I know. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window. It wasn't shuttered. And there was a candle inside, so I couldn't help seeing him. His partner, Marley, lies at the point of death, I hear. And there Scrooge sat, all alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit, spirit, I can't bear any more. Leave me. Haunt me no more. Take me back. Take me back. On the stroke of one, Scrooge awakened suddenly and sat bolt upright in his own bed. He remembered the words of Marley's ghost and wondered from which direction the second specter would appear. At that moment, nothing between a baby and a rhinoceros would have astonished him very much. Now being prepared for almost anything, he was not by any means prepared for nothing. And consequently, when no shape appeared, he was taken with a violent fit of trembling. Five minutes, ten minutes, a quarter of an hour went by, yet nothing came. Then, as he sat in his bed, he became aware, gradually, of a great blaze of ruddy light which seemed to shine upon him from the adjoining room. He got up softly and shuffled in his slippers to the door. It was his own sitting room, no doubt about that, but it had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceiling were so hung with living green that it looked a perfect grove, from every part of which Bright gleaming berries glistened, and such a mighty blaze went roaring up the chimney as had never been known in Scrooge's time, or for many and many a winter season gone. Heaped up on the floor, to form a kind of throne, were turkeys, geese, game, poultry, great joints of meat, suckling pigs, long wreaths of sausage, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red-hot chestnuts, and seething bowls of punch, that made the chamber dim with their delicious steam. In easy state upon this couch, there sat a jolly giant, glorious to see, who bore a glowing torch, in shape not unlike Plenty's horn, 
and held it up, high up, to shed its light upon Scrooge as he came peeping round the door. Ho, 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 come in! Come in, Ebenezer Scrooge, and know me better, man! Who? Who? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You've never seen the like of me before. You're... you're different from the other spirit. You're tall, almost a giant, and that great torch you carry. Its light pours into the homes of rich and poor alike. Spirit, take me where you will. Last time I went against my will and learned a lesson which is working now. If you have anything to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. Touch my robe. Where have you brought me, spirit? A humble dwelling in a humble street. It's humble enough. Yet there is happiness there. Who, who are these people? Who's that woman and the children? These are the family of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. His wife, dressed in a twice-turned gown, but brave in ribbons, laying the table for their Christmas dinner. And there, assisting her, is her daughter Belinda. And the young man with the fork and the stuffing, well, that's Master Peter Cratchit. And the two little Cratchits. Shh, listen. Martha, mother. Hooray! 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 Why, bless your heart alive, Martha, my dear. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, mother. Merry Christmas. How late you are, my dear. Oh, we had a deal of work to finish up last night, and we had to clear away this morning. Well, never mind, so long as you're here now. Sit ye down before the fire and have a warm Lord bless ye. Where's father? He's been to church with Tiny Tim. They'll be along directly. How is Tiny Tim, Mother? Any better at all? Sometimes I think he is. And sometimes I think, oh dear God, if anything should happen to Tiny Tim. Mother, you mustn't even think of such a thing. Here they are. There's Tiny Tim. Merry Christmas, everybody. Martha, welcome, my dear. Merry Christmas, Father, and Tim. Merry Christmas, Martha. Oh, Tim, you darling. Oh, Father, I'm so glad to be home. And we're so glad to have you, Martha. And how did little Tim behave in church, Bob? Oh, as good as gold, and better. I like church, Mother. Oh, they sing the nicest songs. I hope people saw me there. Saw you there? And why, Tim? Well, don't you see? Because I'm lame. And if they saw my crutch, it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas who it was that made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Oh, bless you, my son. Are you ready to eat, Mother? Come on, let's eat! Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Yes, children, we're all ready. Come, come, take your places. And Bob, slow down. There's plenty. Stuffing and dressing and plum pudding for all of you. Martha, you take care of Tiny Tim. Yes, Mother. See that he eats plenty. He must get tall and well. Now sit down, everyone sit down. Ah, now, my dears, shall we say grace? Our Father, who art in heaven, we thank thee for thy daily bread which in thy mercy thou dost give to us. Bless us this Christmas day, keep us all together, so that for many years to come we may unite here to do thy will and praise thy name. Amen. Amen. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. Oh, no, 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 kind spirit. Say he'll be spared. Say he'll live. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, Ebenezer, the child will die. And now, my dears, with such a dinner, a toast. A Merry Christmas to us all, and God bless us. Amen. God bless us, everyone. And now, to Mr. Scrooge. I give you a toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed who pays you all of 15 shillings a week. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast on, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. Oh, my dear, the children, Christmas Day. Well, it should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. 
You know he is, Bob. Nobody knows it better than you, poor fellow. My dear Christmas Day. I'll drink his health for your sake and for the day's sake, not for his. Long life to him, a merry Christmas and a happy new year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say, God bless him too, Mother, and everyone. There was nothing of high mark in all this. They were not a handsome family, these Cratchits. They were not well dressed. Their shoes were far from being waterproof. Their clothes were scanty and had known very likely the insides of a pawnbroker's. But they were happy, grateful, pleased with one another, and contented with the time. When at last they faded, Scrooge had his eye upon them and especially on Tiny Tim, until the last. Many calls Scrooge made that night with the ghost of Christmas present. Down among the miners they went, who labor in the bowels of the earth, and out to sea among the sailors at their watch, dark, ghostly figures in their several stations. Much they saw and far they went, and many places they visited, but always with a happy end. The spirit stood beside sick beds, and they were cheerful on foreign lands and they were close at home by poverty, and it was rich. In almshouse, hospital, and jail, where vain man in his little brief authority had not made fast the door and barred the spirit out, the spirit left his blessing. It was a long night, if it was only a night, and it was strange, too, that while Scrooge remained unaltered in his outward form, the ghost grew older, clearly older. My life upon this globe is very brief, Ebenezer. It ends tonight. Tonight? Tonight at midnight. Hark! The hour has come. Oh, no, no, not yet, not yet. There, there's, there's still more that I wish to learn. These you will learn from still another spirit. Still another spirit, Ebenezer. Scrooge looked about him for the ghost. It had vanished, and he found himself once more in his bed, in his dressing gown and his nightcap on his head. He heard the clock strike, and then he remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley, and lifting up his eyes, beheld the third spirit. A solemn phantom, shrouded in black, draped and hooded, coming towards him, slowly and silently like a mist along the ground. I know you. You, you are the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You'll show me the shadows of things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Answer me, spirit, ghost of the future. I fear you more than any specters I've seen. Yet I know your purpose is to do me good. And I... And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, lead on, lead on. The night's waning fast, and time's precious. Spirit, why, why have you brought me here again? Here, to Bob Cratchit's home. It's not the same. What? Why is it so quiet? So very quiet here. (laughs) Mother, mother, please. Oh, my son. My little son, Tiny Tim. I loved him so. Oh, mother dear, you mustn't. It's almost time for father to be home. Don't let him see you crying. Yes. Yes, Martha. He's late tonight. He walks slower than he used to, and yet I've known him to walk very fast indeed with Tiny Tim on his shoulder. So have I, Mother. But he was light to carry, and his father loved him so that it was no trouble, no trouble. Bob! Good evening, my dear. You're late, Bob. Yes, I'm sorry, my dear. I, I went to the churchyard today. I wish you could have gone with me. It would have done your heart good to see how sweet and green a place it is. But you'll see it often, I promised him. Yes, I promised Tiny Tim we'd walk there on a Sunday. Father, dear. 
It's God's will, Bob. I'm trying to understand it, my dear. My son. My little son, Tiny Tim. And I loved him so. Oh, that's cruel. Cruel. Spirit, can't you give me one ray of hope that I may change all that? That Tiny Tim may live? Where are you taking me now? Here? On a common street, spirit? What is there for me to learn here? Who are these people? I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. It's likely to be a very cheap funeral. For upon my life, I don't know anybody to go to it. Suppose we make up a party and volunteer. I don't mind going if lunch is provided. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it, I'll bet I was his best friend. What? Well, we used to nod to each other when we met in the street. <laughs> Spirit, help me. Who is this man that died? Is there no one to mourn the poor creature? No one to follow him to the grave? Perhaps they'll give him a green grave at least, like poor Tiny Tim, perhaps? Spirit, where are we now? Merciful heaven, a churchyard, overrun by grass and weeds, choked with too much burying, desolate, lonely, crumbling gravestones. Spirit, before I draw nearer to that gravestone, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of things that will be? Or are they shadows of things that may be only? Will you not speak to me, spirit? What is that grave to which you point? Oh, now I see it. Uh, there's writing on that stone. The name on the gravestone is... But he's a Scrooge. But he's a Scrooge. Oh, no, no, spirit. No, no, no. Hear me. I'm not the man I was. Why, show me this if I am past all hope. Tell me that I can change these dreadful shadows you showed me by an altered life. I'll honor Christmas in my heart. I'll try to keep it all the year. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future. And I'll not shut out the lessons that they teach. Tell me, spirit. Oh, go on, tell me. Tell me that I can sponge away the writing on that stone, spirit. I beg you, spirit, I beg you. Spirit, I promise. I promise on my knees. I promise. I... I... What? Why, what's this? It's my own drape. Oh, I'm home. In my own bed. In my own room. And the sun, the sun is shining. It's clear. It's bright. No fog. What a beautiful day. Hey, boy. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. What's, what's today? What's that, sir? What day is it, my fine fellow? Today? Why is Christmas Day? Ha <laughs> ha! Christmas Day! They... Then I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. All in one night. Heaven be praised. Well, how's that, sir? Listen, my lad. You know where the poulterer is in the next street? I should say I do. Ha <laughs> ha! An intelligent boy. A remarkable boy. Tell me, do you know if they sold the prize turkey that was hanging in the window? The one as big as me? <laughs> what a delightful boy. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now, sir. That's wonderful. Go down, will you? And tell them to send it over to Bob Cratchit and his family on Broad Street. And mind you, they are not to know who paid for it. Go along. Hurry, hurry, my lad. Here, here, wait a minute. Here's half a crown for your trouble. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And a Merry Christmas, sir. Ha <laughs> ha, and a Merry Christmas to you, my boy. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. And I'm as happy as an angel. 
I'm as merry as a schoolboy. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. A happy new year to all the world. Woohoo! Yo! My dear sir, how do you do? I, I beg your pardon? Well, you, sir, aren't you the gentleman who came to my office in regard to that charity? Why, yes, sir. A Merry Christmas to you. Uh, yes, sir. Allow me to ask your pardon, sir. And will you have the goodness to accept? I prefer to whisper this. What? But, Lord, bless me, my dear Scourge. Are you serious? If you please. Now, not a farthing less. <laughs> a great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. <laughs> will you... <laughs> will you do me that favor? Well, my dear sir, I don't know what to say to such a... Now, don't say anything, please. Come and see me. Will you? Will you come and see me? I will. I will indeed. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank ye. I'm much obliged to you. I thank you fifty times. Bless you. Merry Christmas! Next morning, Scrooge was early at his office. He went early for a reason. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late, that was the thing he'd set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No Bob. A quarter past. No Bob. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come in. At last he came. His hat was off before he opened the door. His comforter, too. He was on his stool in a jiffy, driving away with his pen, as if he were trying to overtake nine o'clock. Fifteen and twenty-one, six, carry the one, twenty-four, and carry the two, thirty-one, and... Hello, you Cratchit! Yes, sir? Step this way, Cratchit, if you please. Cratchit! What do you mean by coming in at this time of day? Well, I am very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. You are. Yes, yes, I think you are. Oh, it's only once a year, Mr. Scrooge. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. I'll tell you what, my friend. I'll not stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, Bob Cratchit, I'm about to raise your salary. Mr. Scrooge, are you quite yourself, sir? <laughs> no, no. No, thank heaven I'm not quite myself. Merry Christmas, Bob! Ha <laughs> ha! Merry Christmas, my good fellow! A merrier Christmas than I have given you in many a year. I shall raise your salary, and we'll see what we can do for Tiny Tim and the rest of your family. Ha ha ha! We'll discuss it this very afternoon over a glass of wassail. Bob! Make up the fire! Make it up, and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. To Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh, and little heeded them. His own heart laughed. That was quite enough for him. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, of all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. I love that story. Wasn't it nice? The story of redemption. Yeah. Exactly. Here's some outtakes. Um, uh, actually, we, we opened up with an outtake 
uh, <laughs> uh, my friend Pete, who did Marley, and his voice cracked. And I, Ebenezer Scrooge, <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> All right, take two. Sounds like Marley is getting ready to keel over there. Yeah, and then I found I found the Carolers. That works. Sleep in heavenly peace. It reminds me of the Peanuts, like the Charlie Brown right, music right, where they're yeah. all just singing in <laughs> unison and it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, we didn't use that in the show. We used uh, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare <laughs> him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. You know, can I say something? I've always thought that was a lazy lyric. I'm sorry to rip uh, Joy to the World, but it's almost like they didn't have another, they had to fill a couple of syllables, so they just said, and heaven and heaven twice. Oh, I, yeah. I know what you mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> and heaven, yeah. Yeah. Heaven. And heaven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, they should have put one other word in there. Heaven and creation and I don't know. Something, Something, yeah. (laughs) It it bugs me, but (laughs) (laughs) sorry. (laughs) You know what's funny is we actually just sang that at church this past weekend, and I think I had that same, (laughs) when I saw the lyrics up on the screen, I I think I had that same thought that, well, we're saying heaven and heaven. Yeah. And now then you make the comment too. Yeah, when you see the words, then it it becomes more obvious. Now I've just ruined the song for everybody out there. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks for reminiscing about Christmas with me, Allie. Yeah, absolutely. I'm always up for uh, anything Christmassy. Yeah. So um, thanks for another great year. This has been the Smorgasbord Radio Show. We'll be back in the new year with some new crazy antics and new conspiracy theories, I'm sure. Yes. But, (laughs) But for today, we took a break from that. That's right. Enjoy the time with your family. Enjoy the time off. Sit around the fire together with a warm cocoa. And a warm wassail. Yes. (laughs) Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.